All right, so the first one, and some of these, there's a few different ways to go. The first one, plot the function y equals x squared. If you don't just know off the top of your head what that looks like, what, what would be a technique for figuring that out? Yeah, just plot a bunch of points. Yep. Um, this actually, that graph y equals x squared is one that comes up a ton in physics. Um, and so if you don't know it off the top of your head now, you probably will during this semester. But it looks like this. What's the name of that function? Anyone remember? Parabola, yep. And so, you know, if you go out to 1, 1 squared is 1. So this is the point 1, 1 here. If you go out to 2, 2 squared is 4. And, you know, if you plotted uh, four or five points, you know, you'd probably start to get a sense of what that looked like. The second one, figuring out the slope from one point to another point. Uh, did anybody figure that one out? Two thirds. I don't remember what it is, but oh yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Uh, and the way to do it is remember slope is rise over run. So you can think of the rise as like your final y value minus your initial y value. The run is your final x value minus your initial x value. So uh, for the rise, we have 3 minus 2. And for the run, we have 4 minus 1. And so you get 1 third. And that would look something like, you know, uh, so you'd have one point that was at, what was it, 1, 2 here. Your second point is at 4, 3, like here. And so we're talking about the slope of this line. It's not really a, li a line. It's a ray or something. Um, Anybody have an idea what the slope would be of the ray going the other direction? Neg it'd be negative one third. Um, is no, it wouldn't. It would be. Oh yeah, right. It's the. It would be. Well, you'd flip. You'd be going. Yeah, everything would just be switched. What the hell would that do? If you change direction, you wouldn't be the same line. Because yeah. you'd have to do negative one. But if you're reflecting it, it would be the same path. If you change directions, it's the same line. Oh, yeah, so you're, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because you just go 2 minus 3 over 1 minus 4. Okay, that was a super stupid question. Okay, well, I can do the rest of them. So I'm still eligible for this class. <laughs> um, okay, so simplify this next expression. So we had a, b squared, c squared over b to the fourth, a times square root of c. There's a few ways you can think about this. Um, one way is to think of all these as just being multiplied together with different exponents. Uh, so you can think of it as like a times b squared times c squared times b to the minus fourth times a to the minus first. And then what's the exponent on that last one? Minus one half. 
Um, so c to the minus one half. And then the benefit of this is, if you remember exponent rules, um, this is a to the first. Um, if you multiply two things that have the same base and different exponents, you have that same base, and the exponent is the sum of those two exponents. You go from like multiplying to adding exponents. So um, these two cancel because you have one minus one. Uh, two minus four is minus two. So we have b to the minus two. And then multiplied by two minus one half. So c to the three halves. Yep. And then the last one. Can you write your answer so that we can Oh yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, so that would be uh, you could write it a couple ways. You could write it as c to the 3 halves over b squared, or you could write it as um, c cubed square root over b squared. Or c, uh, these are all saying the same thing, you know. But there's a few ways you can write it. And then the last, uh, oh yeah, number four. Um, we're trying to solve that equation for a. So we have a squared times bc is equal to 4c plus b squared c squared. Is that right? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get a by itself, um, or you know, a to whatever power by itself. So let's divide both sides by bc. Uh, you get a squared is equal to 4c plus b squared c squared divided by bc. And now to get a by itself, take the square root of both sides, and You get almost this, almost done. Um, you could simplify this and get that answer to look a little different. But what's the one thing I'm missing here? This isn't quite true yet. Plus minus, yep. And that plus minus is another thing that's going to be important in this class. Uh, anytime you take a square root um, of a set of variables, you could have the positive of that expression or the negative. And in physics, they generally each mean something, okay? So we're going to have to take that, consider that. Anybody have any questions about that or the plus minus thing? You remember the plus minus thing? Okay. And then the last one is that system of equations. Uh, so we have x1 plus x2 is equal to 50. The second equation is 2x1 minus 3x2 is equal to negative 10. Who came up with a way to solve this, and how did you do it? Yep. Just when you go subtract the x2, you get x1 plus x2 minus x2, and substitute that into the second equation. That idea is totally right. Like, you'd have to multiply one of them by something first so that they'd cancel. Um, like, maybe you'd want to, yeah, if you multiplied the whole first equation by 3, then you'd get 3x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 150, uh, 2x1 minus 3x2 
is equal to negative 10. And then you can add these two equations. Those cancel, and you have 5x1 is equal to 140. Uh, that gives you x1 is equal to 28. And then you can plug 28 back in for x1 into either of these two equations and get the value of x2, 22. Um, another way, so that's probably the sort of quickest way to do it in this particular case. Um, sometimes that way of doing it can be sort of a nightmare, though, uh, depending on what the equations look like. The way that sort of just always works in the systems of equations that we're going to deal with is solve for one variable in terms of the other and then substitute it into the other equation. That would give you the same, same answers. Um, it would be a little slower in this case, but it works generally instead of sort of having to pick and choose when to use it. Anyone have any questions about any of those? Okay. Uh, let's stop there and start physics on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, come ask questions.